Hello everyone, this is Boucher99 and I'm doing a reaction video to the poly drug addict interview named Chris. This is by Softway Underbelly. The interviewer is Mark Laisha. And I watch these videos for educational and informational purposes. I just want to say I appreciate everyone that stops by, gives me a like, comment, and subscribe. It's always been a goal of mine to become like an influencer, a great streamer and things as such so I really appreciate all of you for almost helping me reach 300 followers it's been a real long journey um, I think it's been almost a year since I just decided to make a YouTube video and I'm trying to get better at my editing skills and things like that I know there's been gaps in between my videos and me posting so I'm going to try to become more consistent with my videos and I would appreciate it if you share your ideas and opinions as well. Alright, so let's see what Chris is going to teach us today. Alright, Chris. Chris, uh, where'd you grow up? Where are you from originally? I'm originally from Carson, Carson, California. Mm -hmm. Tell me about your family growing up. Uh, grew up in a good, a good household uh, without a dad, but uh, raised by my mom and grandparents. I was born in 1981. Um, come from a working class family. Grandparents retired, they worked. My mother uh, worked, she passed away a few years back. Um, uh, what was your childhood like? My childhood upbringing was uh, privileged. Um, pretty much got what I wanted. Um, Stayed out of trouble? For the most part, just like any regular teenager or kid, Got into uh, typical stuff that a teenager would get into. Uh, didn't go to jail as a teenager. Um, it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. Uh, grew up uh, in front of the TV acting with Betty Bridges uh, in her active school. Did you finish high school? Uh, yes. I went to Sherman Oaks, Center for Enriched Studies. Um, went to college. Uh, kind of... Uh, So far, he really seems like a really nice dude, and um, you can just tell that he's uh, he, he's educated as a book smart. You can kind of hear it in his voice, but so far, basically, he grew up in a single parent household. He um, he said he grew up kind of privileged. He went to school, got into trouble, not much trouble, but you know he was a regular kid teenager that you know does whatever um luckily he wasn't like in the system so he wasn't like in jail or nothing which he's fortunate you know as long as he kept himself out of that type of trouble that's good How did, how did, it was it was different once I became an adult because I was able to do what I really wanted to do and I wanted to do everything that I wasn't supposed to do. I was attracted to that stuff, all the, all the bad stuff. You know, I joined a gang too as a teenager. Um, but I, I, was still, I was still a good kid, still going to school. It was uh, more of a tribal thing, you know, belonging to somewhere, somewhere, you know. I can't blame that on my father not being in the home. Some people do, I don't. It was a decision I made as a, as a, as a, as a child. Um, and everything after that was just decisions that I made, good ones and bad ones. You got in some trouble. Yeah, I didn't start getting into trouble until I was an adult. Um, I was arrested for armed robbery, saw charges. Uh, I married, I married uh, early. Uh, domestic violence, um, repeatedly. Um, Like I said in my other videos, these people are still learning from and going through their losses. So they're still learning and they're still going through these things. So that's also something to keep in mind if you watch Soft White Underbelly. Um, you can learn, that's why you learn a lot from them because they're learning lessons as they go. And it's not like they're like the most successful people and stuff like that. It's just that they, they know what they've been through and they're here to teach you a lesson. And that's why, you know, I like to watch these videos. 
just a slew of things. What was the, what was the first uh, arm, arm robbery? Tell me about that. It was like a misunderstanding, you know. Um, me and a friend of mine, we was uh, hanging out. We was young, you know, probably like 18. We was hanging out, and uh, we ran into a, a fellow, a fellow uh, blood gang member. And he said he was going in the store, so we was waiting on the store, asking people for change so we can get one of those cigars, a black them out or something. And uh, we look in the store, he got a gun out. He's robbing the store, and I'm like, whoa. So by the time we could leave the area, the police had came everywhere and arrested us. And uh, we sat in jail for a little bit, and before we get interviewed by the detectives, I told my buddy from my neighborhood, I said, hey, uh, Let's just tell the truth. We don't know this dude. We don't know him. We don't, we don't have nothing to do with nothing. We don't even know what was going on. So we, we stuck to that story. And uh, that was the truth? Yeah, it was the truth. And uh, they just let us out, you know. And uh, my, getting out, we missed uh, one of our friend's funerals, uh, one of my close friends, because we was in jail. And uh, a lot of people was mad at us. It's like, oh, you didn't come to the funeral. You know, they didn't really, they, didn't, they never talked to me, or asked me what was really going on. But, uh, yeah, that was the first one. Second one was like, uh, maybe, maybe some domestic stuff, uh, possessions, um, assaults, terrorist threats, just a, just a gang of bullshit, gang of bullshit. What's, Came, the, what's the attraction to all that trouble? It was more like being a vigilante, just being freelance, just just doing what I wanted, you know? Um, making some fast money, some quick money, a lot of it. Um, the delayed gratification of going to college and doing it that way just didn't appeal to you? Well, I was doing it while I was at college. I was selling, I was selling drugs at college, you know? And, and, you know, things happened with that too. Um, It was just it was just a, a, a image that was painted like let's get it now because you don't know if you're gonna be here tomorrow. So let's just get it now, you know. Um. That's something I was thinking about today, um, earlier. Um, not that that type of state of mind is the right one, like oh let's get it now and just start going all out and stuff like that. But that's kind of where I was thinking was if I was gone today like later on today like there's something like for example say for example you get hurt or something right say your leg breaks today right and now you're thinking to yourself damn I can't walk the way I want to tomorrow just because your leg broke today and you weren't expecting it and it's like dang I could I could have did all those things with my legs beforehand now that now that it's messed up I can't so it's like you got to live with that regret like oh man I could have did all those things right and that's why I started thinking about my my channel like you know what if you make a video every day and then you know you don't regret not making a video every day <laughs> but uh, I'm I'm trying to get there You know, when you're young, you think you think for the right now, you don't think for the future. You want it like right now. You know, the things we know today, if we knew them back then, we wouldn't want to make those decisions. But at the same time, you can't let, you can't be too greedy. You can't let that greed overcome you because it'll make you do things that you don't, you shouldn't be doing. And um, yeah, greed can make you do things and make you treat people certain ways and it's, it's not good. How old are you now? I'm 40 years old now. You're 40? Yeah. You got involved in drugs too? Oh, yeah, yeah. Drugs crept up on me, man. About a little bit before my mom died, it was always messing around with him, but I wasn't all the way into it like that. Um, it just led up to it, you know, uh, from, from marijuana, alcohol, just abusing those things, to meth, until uh, I was abusing that, going out of my mind. Uh, to crack cocaine, even now, you know, currently, and um, that's it's it's just it's just new to me, 
And um, it's an escape, you know, uh, just abusing it, not really caring. Um, Where's the drug life taking you? Usually it sends people spiraling downward. Oh yeah, uh, the drug life took me spiraling downward. Uh, my, my health, my physical health, got to walk with a cane. Uh, Why is that? Broke my spine. Uh, snapped my leg in half. I had a, about a hundred foot fall out of a hotel room window. How did that happen? Under the influence. Being under the influence. That's that's unfortunate for Chris. Um, He got injured and he hurt his leg because he had fell from a hotel window while he was like intoxicated. And he broke his spine. So a lot of people that go through that, like say if you're a construction worker, for example, some people like hurt their spine and then they're, they get paralyzed. So he broke his spine and then he broke his leg, but he was able to recover as of this video. And um, I wish the best for you, Chris. I hope you, you know, learn to get better with your physical health. You fell which, which floor? The six. Sixth floor? Yeah. Hotel window you fell out of? Yeah. The window was broken. I was trying to pull it close. And I fell out of it. And, uh, yeah, the rest is history, you know. Broke my spine and the lumbar. Cracked my sacrum. What'd you, what'd you hit? The concrete. Sixth floor. Yeah. You're lucky to be alive. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And uh, since then, you know, I was I was healing up, doing well. But I, it just it just wasn't it wasn't progressing. So being in the hospital, taking all the medications, and uh, uh, the IV shots they was giving me, you know, caused a relapse you know, for the pain. So started with heroin. Um, I couldn't get that anymore. So meth is so easy obtainable. So I was doing that. I was making me go loopy. And then somebody said, hey, try this. And I'm like, okay. So I'll start doing that. And uh, you know, the best is still yet to come with me. Um, just trying to get a way out now. Do you have kids? Yes. Yeah, I got kids. Where are they? No, they with their mothers. Yeah. And where are you staying now? Man, I'm here and there. I'm all over. I'm in the streets. I'm homeless. How long has that been going on? Since my injury, since my accident. You know, I wasn't homeless before my accident. I was working, had my own place, um, just thriving. And, uh, you know, this accident took me back to where I didn't want to be. It's kind of kept me there. That was, that was how long ago? It's February 2022. So a little over a year. Yeah. What's your biggest regret in all of this? Uh, having an accident, having mm -hmm. my accident. Yeah. Coming back down here and having my accident. If I wouldn't have came back down here, it wouldn't have happened. Or it might have, it probably would have just happened somewhere else. But it's one of my regrets. If you hadn't played around with drugs, you probably wouldn't have come down here. That part, if I wasn't messing around, none of this would have happened. Sometimes it takes stuff to happen for some people to change. Everything ain't for everybody. He has some deep messages there. He's saying, basically, before his accident, he was still like, you know, he was still doing his his shenanigans. He was still doing what he was doing. It's just that set that that injury set him back so far that it kind of made him realize even more like where he was at beforehand because he wasn't where he even 
was trying to get yet he was just still messing around and stuff like that and um doing drugs in general can really keep you in the same place and um it, it might not help your situation at all I mean even if you're on prescribed drugs sometimes they, they don't help you the way you want them to help you with your life maybe they might cure your injuries but they're not going to sit there and they're not like making you exceed in life like going like it's like if you're stepping up uh, a stairs and there's like 12 steps to a stairs and you're on the fifth step and then you slip and now you're on the second step and then you finally realize wow like I wasn't even that far up the stairs you know to be slipping the way I, sh I, I slipped I could I could have prevented myself from slipping by holding on to the guardrail and stuff like that but once you're at like the ninth floor you got to be more careful once you're at the ninth step, I can't speak too much because I'm not saying that I'm in a position of any any high status. All I'm saying is that from looking at it at that perspective, if you're at the ninth stair on the stairs, the ninth step on the stairs, and then you fall down, it's a more dangerous fall. So, like what Chris is saying is, um, you you weren't in a position, you know what I mean, like, he wasn't in that place to, you know, he's finally learning. What did you want to do if, when you were done college? I was thinking about audio engineering, I was in college for audio engineering, I was a history major, so I wanted to uh, either teach or just do something in the, in, the, in the audio field, whether it was television or music. What's your biggest fear right now? Um, dying without leaving my kids anything. And living this lifestyle, dying is a possibility. It increases. The possibility increases. You know, when you when you an active addiction, you're around people that's an active addiction. Everybody's on different frequencies, you know, and, and different comprehension levels and reasoning skills are diminished. The capacity to just reason and peace is gone. So when you when you're around that 24-7, things can happen. Things can happen. It can go terribly wrong very quick. You think having a dad in your life might have helped you I, avoid some of these things? Oh yeah, I believe I believe my dad was in my life it would have uh, helped tremendously. But at the time, from what I know is, he wasn't right himself. He is now, but back then he wasn't. So it would have just been the blind leading the blind, so to speak. And uh, me, I don't want to lead anybody, not until I can lead myself. So I just keep my mouth shut about a lot of things, you know? What's it, what's it like falling out of a sixth floor window? Man, you see, you just, the first thing I thought when I was falling, I was like, well, I'm about to die. This is it. That's the first thought that came to my head. And I remember hitting the ground, everything was black, and I'd been down there for a while, bleeding out. And, uh... What time of day did it happen? Uh... Like the late evening. Like the late evening. And I'd been down there for a while. Um, yeah, that was a catastrophic right there, injury right there. That was... How, how has it affected you now? You're, you're walking with a cane. It sucks, man, because I can't fend for myself all the way. I can't, I can't, I can't do a lot of things. And, uh, you know, in Los Angeles, you can always be put to the test when you're in the streets. It's going to be somebody that's going to try to test you. So... I can't sit and play Houdini, but I gotta be prepared and be ready for whatever comes towards me. And it's difficult because that put me in a situation where it's kill or be killed. But you know, I don't I don't live my, my life to, to go out and hurt people. But I do gotta protect myself. But in protecting myself, I can end up in prison or end up dead. 
So it was tough. It's time for me to get set up for therapy and I use this room as my office. But the desk is over here and- So that's how it is for some people, um, including um, pretty much every single one. That's one thing people can share in common is if you're defeating yourself, you can still get in trouble. Not just because it's like you're trying, you're doing something wrong, but it's like he said if he gets put into a kill or be killed situation, that's just how it is. In some places, in some areas, that's just how it is. You can't really stop someone from, you know, their their actions if they're trying to hurt you and you're just trying to like you know stop them from hurting you you know because if you have a great bodily injury or they're trying to um, cause harm to you and you end up like killing them because you're trying to prevent yourself from being harmed it doesn't work that way sometimes you know it's just hard to prove but that's just not how it is. It's just that it's just it's just a whole whole lot to it. There's a lot more to that, and depending on where you're at, it might be different. But in Los Angeles, it's it's more like if you get caught fighting or you know if you got blood on your hands, you're the one that's in trouble, regardless. And that's just that's just how it is. Do you find yourself to be self-destructive? No. No? No. No. What's your greatest strength, do you think? Speaking. Talking. Mm -hmm. What do you go through emotionally? Um, Especially after the accident. I would say it's, I, I go through things emotionally. I just learn how to stop thinking about what's been lost and what can be gained. Um, I try not to dwell on how I used to be and I think about how I can be now. Um, drugs is not the problem. Drugs do what they're supposed to do. Uh, ruin lives, get you high. Uh, they do all that. Uh, I just, I just focus on what can become. You know now. You know. Has your fall changed your attitude about what you're doing? Because it sounds like you're still using. Yes. Um, it changed me a little bit. You know, it's, it's humbled me to a certain extent. I feel like I'm a, a lot more humble. What are you using currently? I like all drugs. I like all of them. Mm. I like to use all of them. I've heard of Skid Row and stuff like that in Los Angeles. Um, there's a Skid Row where I live and It's, it's not really what people are doing, what drugs are doing. It's just that drugs in general. It's just the drug thing in general. It's like, it's not productive. And it took me a while to learn more about why people do the things that they do and what, what it causes. And sometimes you can be so caught up in it that like you don't see the bad side of it you just only see the good thing out of it like it only gets me high you don't see like what being high does to you and the people around you you don't learn when you do drugs you're taking time away not from your own life but from the people around you you're taking days off your own calendar and that that's that's just how it is and 
Chris is going to get better, and um, he's a smart guy. He doesn't, like, repeat himself a whole bunch of times. Um, and he, he acknowledges what he does, and he explains it in a way which is easy to understand. And that's why I like watching these videos, is because you meet all types of different people who have good values. It's just that sometimes they're just not in the best place but they're learning from it so it helps you learn from what you're doing and what you're doing and stuff like that is that because of your self-worth you think or is it just you just start screwing around with these drugs and well since my drugs? accident i was looking for something to kill the pain and drugs kill the pain they help you escape where were you escaping from the pain the trauma, the body trauma, uh, the mental, the PTSD it, it gives me. You're saying bef before the accident or after the accident? After the accident. Oh, after. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of PTSD from that. Oh, yeah. But you were playing around with drugs even before then? Oh, yeah, I was. I was, but I wasn't. I, I don't feel like I was solely dependent on them back then. It was just like if they were there, they were there. Now it's like, man, where are they at? It's different now. Chris, what would you say is the most important lesson you've learned in all of this? Just don't move too fast too soon. You kind of got to sometimes play possum with yourself. You know, you just kind of got to let things play out how they're going to play out and then bust a move. When you're moving too fast, you, uh, you won't see everything. Like on a motorcycle, when you're driving too, right into too fast and you get that tunnel vision, it's kind of how life can be. When you're moving too fast, especially being on the substance of something, you miss, you, you'll miss something. You'll miss something that you probably would have needed to learn or see or know, or you'll miss something. You'll miss the mark. All right, Chris, thank you so much for sharing your story. You're welcome. Hope you continue to heal and uh, get your ass out of this neighborhood. Most definitely. Right, thank, thank you for having me, man. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Chris, for this awesome interview. You taught me so much and I appreciate you. You helped me learn for educational and informational purposes. And I hope you like, comment, and subscribe, please.